There's so many influences out here. There's so many people telling you who you need to be. And then you see people that you like and you want to be like them when really you only want to be like them because they are them. Only reason you like them is because they're all authentically themselves. They seem so free and you want to be like that. But it's the reason that you're attracted to that is because there's a freedom. You got to practice being who you want to be. You got to practice being who you are. It's just, you need to get better at being you. 7.45 a.m. Catch me on the morning meetup. Hosted by David Shane's. Let's do this. How to find your unique voice online. Okay, this is the first thing I want to tell you. This is the first thing I want to tell you that you are perfect. You just need to get better at it. You are perfect. You are perfect, but you need to get better. I know it sounds crazy because something that's perfect doesn't need to get better. But it's not you that needs improvement. You are you. The, the person you are, perfect. Child of God, you were created for a specific perfect purpose, and that is perfect. It's just, you need to get better at being you. It sounds kind of strange, like, yo, I know how to be me, but not really. Most people don't know how to be themselves because we are so inundated with other people's personalities and how other people operate. We're not sure if the things that we're doing is because of something we saw or because that is who we are. I've seen many people change as they grow older. That um, they uh, may be real docile, humble, growing up, and then they move to a different city and they become the person that that city creates. And maybe, maybe you don't feel comfortable showing off your body online. You don't feel comfortable. But somehow you see other people showing off their body online and you feel like that's what you should do. Now, there's nothing wrong with showing off your body online because there are a lot of people that look at it as a sort of, a sort of freedom. Like, I don't have to cover up what God gave me. And I'm cool with that. I get it. But I'm talking to the person who doesn't feel comfortable doing it but they do it because that's what they think the world wants. That's what they think their audience wants. And that is not the case. People want you. Isaac Hayes was telling me uh, about Bad Bunny made 50 something million dollars on OnlyFans. He said he subscribed to her channel and none of that stuff was more than 10 seconds and it wasn't any nudity. Wow, isn't that interesting that she got a chance to be herself and makes more money than anybody that's trying to be somebody else? She, apparently, she doesn't feel comfortable doing the stuff that OnlyFans demands, doing the stuff that you think of for OnlyFans. She doesn't feel comfortable. I believe she makes significantly less money, significantly less impact if she became like somebody else because... Now you're just a bad version of someone else versus the perfect version of you. So you are perfect, but we have to practice be being ourselves. How you talk is perfect. You just need to improve your ability to share a message. So my homegirl, uh, marketing by Mon Ray, I love her. Y'all know Mon Ray, I love her. She is so authentically herself. She is a high-level business entrepreneur, coach, but ghetto. Mm. She talk ghetto. She just launched a podcast called what? The Ghetto CEO. I thought that was brilliant. Like, she's like embracing. I am, listen, I am the Ghetto CEO. You talk to her, she sound like she's from Southwest Atlanta. She ain't changing up her speech pattern. Still a seven-figure business embracing it her podcast is called the ghetto ceo <laughs> she don't try to fix her tone she don't try to speak with a more structured dialect she is herself and she is embracing it now she has to learn more marketing right because she, she she teaches marketing 
right? So she has to learn marketing so she can teach it. She has to become better at marketing. She has to know her audience and then teach her audience in a way that they can receive it. So that takes skill set. But the way she is, the way she talks, how she shows up is perfect because that's who she is. And now she is just leaning into who she is. And that formula has worked out perfectly for her. Go to her page, Marketing by Monray. You think, like when you, when you talk to her, hood, hood. And she's not trying to change that. She's leaning into who she is, which is why she's thriving. And make sure y'all send her a, a, a DM and tell her, David called you ghetto. And she'd be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. She is her. We was just on a trip. Her. Never seen her show up another way. And that is what you call freedom. The ability to be yourself. But we have a hard time being ourselves because we don't know who we are. All we know is what we want people, what we think people want from us. Check this out. Listen to me. Your flaws are probably your biggest asset. People try to hide the flaws. People try to hide certain things about them, not understanding that that is your biggest asset. The people that are perfect, no one can relate to because no one's perfect. Believe it or not, I believe that most of my success came from my ability to share the fact that I'm not perfect. It's me trying to throw out all my flaws so you see them all, so you're not surprised when you see my imperfections. I think it's my greatest asset. But that took a while to be comfortable in who I am, to be comfortable in, in my own skin. Being comfortable not knowing. Listen, people would talk and they would say certain words that I didn't understand because I did not do well in school. Scholastically, feel that word? I did go to college for two years, so. But scholastically, I did not do well. And it's even to this day, it's really challenging for me to like retain information. So school, it just, there are certain words and phrases and things that I just, I don't understand. And people will start talking and they'd say something I don't understand and I would just nod my head, especially if there were people around because I did not want people to think that I was uneducated. What if that is a word or a phrase or terminology that I'm supposed to know at this age and I don't? Then I'm embarrassed. But let me tell let me tell you like how I really got in the gym and how I became uh, uh, better at being myself. I I was I just started to highlight the fact that there's some and make almost make fun of myself that I don't understand that. And then I explain I'm like, oh, I get it. Okay, cool. And then I realized me not knowing certain things, it was okay because people wanted to explain it anyway, except for this one time, this one time, I, and I think I told this story before, I was dating a young lady, she's an attorney, well-educated. And I, every so often, she going to use some words, I'm like, okay, what that mean? And one day she looked at me, I remember we were on our couch, on my couch. She looked at me, she said, are you serious? You really don't know what that means. And I'm like, no, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't. I got so comfortable being me. And I could tell that she was almost disgusted that she is dating someone who does it. And I, I forgot what it was, but dating someone is not educated in that way. And it didn't work out. But guess what? It wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I felt I felt bad at that point. I really did. But even I just started feeling more comfortable sharing the story. And now up front, when I started meeting people, I'm letting you know, hey, some things I'm good at, some things I'm not that good at. 
But my ability to be comfortable not knowing certain things helped me become the podcaster that I am today. Because if you say something, I'm going to clear it up. And I realize, I realize that there are a lot of people just like me. They ain't know that either. And then I get a chance to have fun. And Donnie makes fun of me because I make fun of myself. And it's all good. It feels really, really good. And this is what you call freedom. Freedom. There's also a young lady that uh, I didn't date that much, but it just seems like the stories. She wore makeup all the time, right? And I'm talking about, this is like someone that I'm like talking to. It was been months. Never seen her without her makeup. And she said she was uncomfortable. Me seeing her without makeup. That was the beginning of the end. Why? Because I realized she just wasn't free. She wasn't comfortable in her own skin. And me being comfortable in who I am, I can't be comfortable for you. Because we'll be in a whole bunch of situations where your uh, where your slavery will show up. That was the beginning of the end. I'm here to tell you, look at look at the people on live. You ever see somebody that's always done up, always made up, and they they post a picture bare face. That post will probably get more likes than anything they post, especially if they've been like made up for a long time. And one day they talk about, hey, this is me. I'm free. Look at all my imperfections. That would be the one that people like most. Why? Because other people aren't perfect and they know. So, okay, I would like what I am, which is imperfect. We need practice, guys. But I'm here to assure you, that whatever you don't like about yourself, it's probably your biggest asset. That's what's going to make you relatable. And outside of other people, I want you to be free from the thing that binds you. There's something, there's something that binds you. Something. Something. Uh, once I feel, this is me, once I feel that there's something I have to hide or something I have to like, um, something, that, yeah, something that I like have to hide behind, I immediately lean into it. I'm, I'm getting fat and it's like, this is a, a part of like the gym journey, but I don't want to wear a t-shirt at the pool. So if I just tell you my body ain't right, and you ever catch me at a pool, you're not expecting this big brawny, person you just you're expecting exactly what i told you i was and then i don't feel like i have to be a slave to a t-shirt because you already know <laughs> side note this one had nothing to do with that but uh i learned a lot not i don't have enough time to get into that never mind i'll tell y'all later anyway i'm here to assure you that your flaws are your biggest asset and you need to lean like lean into your strengths but promote your weaknesses got it Not every flaw needs improvement. Some flaws need highlighters. Not every flaw needs improvement. It's not like we need to change everything. Some of them need to be highlighted. So my, for me, which gives me freedom to think and grow as an entrepreneur, because I'm not like, I'm not hiding behind anything. That's the thing that gives me strength. I don't necessarily need to improve my, um, my ability to um, to use big words. Let me just highlight it up front so we don't have this whole conversation about nomenclature. You know what I mean? Did y'all know what that meant? No. What do you... <laughs> it's so funny because Greg Cardo was like, we don't use big words that are nomenclature or something like that. I was like, dang. Because I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means anyway. All right, here we go. Next, create a style. Create your own style, okay? No matter how bad, and do it often, making slight improvements, okay? So what I like you to do is create a style. But the way we're going to create a style is creating a player or a character. I want you to, like, 
put your name at the top of a paper or top of some notes. And then I want you to write out some characteristics of who you'd like to be. Who you'd like to be. How you want to show up. This is how you create your own authentic voice. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to talk in this language to this group of people this often? So I make a list of attributes you'd like to display online, okay? So for me, the attributes that I want to display about myself is casual, okay? So me knowing that, I don't necessarily have to wear a suit and a tie and show up in that way. Why? Because I want my brand to be casual. I want David to be casual. Me talking to me, designing who I want to be. Casual, not haughty. I had to look up the word haughty this morning. But haughty means arrogant, bigger than, like higher than other people, kind of elevated. I do not want to be elevated. So. When I'm talking, I'm not talking from the perspective of this is what you need to do. Very rarely do I instruct people on what they need to do. I make, an, make a suggestion based on my experiences. Why? Because I don't necessarily want to be looked at as the guru. Now, in terms of like podcasting. I'm going to teach podcasting and we're going to keep podcasting. And I want my, my, my brand to be, hey, I understand podcasting. However, even when I talk to people, I understand that I can give you some advice, but I only want you to use a piece of my advice mixed in with who you are, because I know that someone's going to do something opposite what I, of what I teach in their own way. And it's going to, it's going to blow up. It's going to grow. But nothing that I'm saying is absolute. Does that make sense? I don't want people to say, yo, David said, this is 100% what you need to do. In detail. Now I'll tell people, okay, you need to start a podcast, things of that nature. But I'm coming from a perspective of not higher or elevated or more brilliant than anybody else. I'm saying, this is what worked for me and my current success in podcasting. This is what you should do. This is what you can do. I'm going to make you some suggestions. But if you come back to me and say, no, I don't think that's going to work. Let's have a conversation about it. Because I know that I don't have every answer. But some people may, may want to paint the picture of themselves as the person who has all the answers. I see it online. These people tend to talk in third person. <laughs> Anybody that talks in third person, they're like, they're, they're talking as if they are an entity, which I'm not mad at, okay? I'm, 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 not, I'm not mad at that, but that's who they decided to be. I want to be an authority. I want to paint the picture of that I am higher than everybody else, and there's a market for that because some people need someone to look up to. Someone needs someone to say, no, this is what you're supposed to do. They need somebody to say, okay, don't think, just do what I'm telling you to do. It's all good. But this is this is me creating my own, what I want people to think of. So when you think of me, I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, it's it's David. Uh, like and, and people do do that in the airports and where I'm at, and it's cool. And I'm like, yo, whoa, 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 bro. What's up, fam? You good? Let's let's have a conversation. It's all good. And I, I'll typically in my in my church we like kind of bow to each other because it's like kind of Asian influence. So I'll shake your hand, give you a little nod of, listen, we are both. I I appreciate you like you appreciate me. I need this interaction. I know you're excited because maybe you watched the podcast for a while. You're excited to meet me, but I'm excited to meet you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not everyone's that way, and I'm not saying how I am is better than anyone else. I'm just saying, this is the brand. This is who I want to be. Does that make sense? I want my brand to be fun. I want it to be brief. I don't have to give you an hour conversation when we see each other. And, and most importantly, I want my brand to be imperfect. I want the flaws. This is, these are just some characteristics that I've created 
for myself and how I want to show up. So I want you to do that because this will help you identify your unique voice. And then you lean into that. We paint a picture of what we want people to see from us and then we deliver that, but not based on what we think they want. It's based on who we want to be looked at as. It's based on who we want to be, how we want to show up, how we're going to deliver. Here's what I can guarantee you though. And I don't talk in guarantees and absolutes often. I guarantee you, if you show up as yourself, and you create this like you you create this like this list of attributes that you want to display. If you start displaying those, you will find a tribe of people who love exactly who you are. You really have to stop being stop attempting to be a bad version of someone else. I tried it. I got introduced to motivational speaking from ET. And my first objective in terms of being a motivational speaker, because that's what I saw, that I have to be more high energy, more aggressive. And my coach CJ at the time said, yo, that is terrible. <laughs> I was like, look at this video, man. Look at all that energy. He said, wow, that is terrible. He makes this joke. He said, yo, I was actually less motivated. <laughs> After watching, I give him a motivational video of myself. He said, yo, I'm actually less motivated than when I started watching. <laughs> he was less motivated. Isn't that crazy? But he, he showed me. This took a coach. This took practice. He showed me how to be myself. He said, David, you are a teacher. He said, you understand things on a very, very practical level. Just start teaching people on practical level. I thought that I had to know like all of the funnels and how it works and the marketing. And I, I don't, I don't got none of that. I thought, I thought that if I give people a three-step system of, okay, write down your goal of how many sales you want to make today. And then just start asking people for money. There's no sales tactic. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know any sales tricks, but just ask people for money. Just make sure in the interaction, you say these words, will you like to buy? I thought, like, I thought that was, that was so elementary that everybody already knew that. But I realized once I started teaching it, people are getting so excited about themselves. And they're like, yo, it worked. Oh my gosh, the greatest information in the world. I thought I had to give strategy, like, high level strategies and whoa, me being me worked. The stuff that worked for me worked. I'm just telling my own story. The stuff that worked for me worked. That's kind of why it's important to be in an industry where you're offering something based on some sort of experience or so if you have a product, hopefully the product that you're selling had some sort of importance in your life because now you can use real stories of how the thing that you're selling other people actually helped you. It don't have to be nothing deep because you experience what you experience and you're just sharing your experience and it makes it a whole lot easier to make money because it's often experience. That's why it's, it's kind of weird watching people coach when they haven't really built anything because you don't have any experience. So you can't give me any stories. You can only give me these high level strategies that you heard somewhere that you did not implement yourself. Okay. You gotta practice being who you wanna be. You gotta practice being who you are. Okay? Being yourself is so hard. I'm, I'm telling you, this is an exercise. This is, this is tough. Being who you are is hard. Like, be, like just being yourself, there's so many influences out here. There's so many people telling you who you need to be. And then you see people that you like and you want to be like them when really you only want to be like them because they are them. Only reason you like them is because they're authentically themselves. They seem so free and you want to be like that. 
But it's the reason that you're attracted to that is because there's a freedom. I love Cardi B. Golly. Cardi B, you know, Cardi B is Cardi B. She ain't trying to be Lil' Kim. She ain't trying to be all these other people. Cardi, Cardi is Cardi. Uh, all day. All, she's not chasing after anybody. Lizzo, yes, but Lizzo is, Liz, that's why y'all love her. She's like, oh, oh, big girl's supposed to cover it up? Nope, y'all gonna see this. <laughs> y'all gonna see every little bit of this. Pull up. And her being like courageous enough to say, yo, who I am is beautiful. How I'm shaped is beautiful. It gives so many other people freedoms to be themselves. And there are a lot of people who are waiting for you to be you and stop hiding behind this mask that you've created. You gotta stop hiding behind this mask. I, I, I hope, I hope that everybody here at some point um, experiences what it feels like to be free. I hope, I hope, I hope. People feel, experience what it feels like to be free. I can only, only imagine. There's a friend, I don't know if it's a friend of mine, but it's somebody that I know. And uh, we all know that um, that uh, they're hiding something about their um, their sexual preference. And one day it, it will come out for sure. But I feel so bad because he's hiding. I feel so, it's not the choice, but the, the fact that you don't feel, like I can, I can only imagine what it's like, especially especially maybe um, 20 years ago, 20 years, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Now we have more liberties and people are more out loud and this is who I am and this is how I was created. But I, 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 can, I can only imagine what it feels like to be something and have to hide based on what you think other people are gonna think. I can only imagine what that's like. And I feel for that because it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a slavery. Because man, I want to I, I want people to know who I am, but I can't because people are gonna feel a way. And I and I feel the same way. I, I mean, goodness gracious. Are people gonna know that I experience anxiety? Will people leave my coaching program if they knew all the stuff that I deal with? If they knew that I'm still struggling as a husband and as a father, and I'm still trying to balance it all, and I still get stressed out, and I still don't know what I'm doing sometimes. I wonder. I wonder if it's okay to be me. And one day, one day you are going to get tired of hiding and you're going to experience this freedom and you're going to realize, yo, you wouldn't trade all of the wealth in the world for this freedom that you have. Mike Tyson, yo, Mike Tyson, remember Mike Tyson on top of the world. I'm talking about the most decorated athlete, the most popular athlete in the world. After he lost everything, he seemed a lot more happy. He seemed so liberated. Yo, I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta be the champ no more. I ain't gotta hide behind this money. Okay. Brim, thank you so much for allowing me to share. I <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, we will get back. I got some steps for you on Wednesday. Um, but um, yeah, this is where we were today. So um Find your, I want y'all to do that homework, create that list, and let's start displaying those attributes. Friend, floor is yours, my sister. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're gonna like this one, maybe even more.